But yeah. you know, let's let's get in on the show now. It's all about the the Wafcon. Now, some, something happened last last week. Yeah, you know that you know it caused a whole lot of you know sparked a whole lot of debate online. I was, I was seeing you know media guys going at each other, throwing subtle shades against each other and all that. Now it was because of Randy Wardrum. Now he came out to say this man is under pressure. Yeah, we know. I think the Super Falcons handling the Super Falcons. I think is his biggest job till date. You know, in, in, in looking at his CV and all that. Now he came out to say, you know, when they lost that first game, he came out to say that the media in Nigeria is negative. Now I know this happened last week. A lot of people have talked about it, but I felt we should. You know, we always do our own thing differently. Our opinions here are really valued highly. You know, across our viewers out there. Now he came out to say that the media in Nigeria is negative, and uh, you know, journalists in in Morocco didn't find this you know funny apparently he had you know restricted access to his team they couldn't cover training they couldn't get close to the team and all that he doesn't want any he wanted to focus that was his reason so he came out to say nigeria media is negative and all that so it's part of a lot of debate online now i don't know what you think about about this comment you know uh for me i i know the fans are definitely negative you know we all saw the the fans coming when they lost that first game the girls weren't good enough they were all old ladies the coach doesn't know what he's doing apparently maybe Wardrum saw this comment and felt you know the negative the negativity coming from outside was too much so he made that comment although he has come out to apologize you know according to the reports that the nff people they came out to they approached him and tell him to rescind this comment but you know let's let's get back to that debate and, and all that what do you make of those comments do you think it was too much pressure on him to come out to make that comment or do you think the nigerian media is actually negative uh what was it in nigerian media let's focus on the nigerian sports media yeah okay but generally the nigerian media thrives on negativity it's not a new thing the reason why we got boaria as president is the negative media that was put on uh good luck jonathan in the first place now we know better anyway but it's always too late uh th there's no media in the world that does not have negativity anyway but you have to find the balance and i i, I think like i said last week the super falcons have earned the right to go a couple of tournament without even playing well without winning and still get the respect of the people brazil does not win every tournament and yeah. they're respected i was in brazil in 2014 that's one of the worst brazilian team that i've seen not good enough uh you know they are played it seemed like in the group stage they were helped by the referee to get through but i saw the loyalty of the the fans and even the media because they love their team when they lost 7-1 in the semi-finals to germany the whole country was in mourning i'm sure germany you know look at the city how sad they were and they felt like we've done something more it's like dropping the uh, atomic bomb in uh, hiroshima and nagasaki and you know the german national team came out to apologize for beating a team seven one but my point is our sporting media is very negative and that has rubbed off on sports development over a long period of time so the original modus operandi of the media is if we want your attention we strike a negative blow and then you react because that's the way you work because we don't run again sports is not run in such a way where there is elaborate means to connect with the major actors, whether it's the administrators, whether it's the coaches or the players. So if I want uh, Asisa Toshala to give me a response, I'll go on, uh, on Twitter or social media or on my show and say something negative about her, knowing that even if she doesn't get it, her friends, family members, fans will see it and show it to her, and then she will reply. Just, just like that. That's the way we've done media. But you see, the times have changed. The times have really changed and we're still living in that old method that old way of hot shot that old way of let's say something negative and then they will react because reaction makes uh the story proliferate right yeah we we have not come to realize that we are in the era of building not in the era of pulling down anymore the nigerian sporting media was designed as a pull them down media even amongst themselves uh, let me use a very vintage example and he's a guy that i love so much i love him for his dexterity his dedication his commitment even though sometimes he fall far of this same problem of being like the old media when toby adekwaju wanted to start doing sports reporting and all that his passion nobody saw his passion what they saw was his flaws and that's the 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 typical nigerian media system some of the top men in Nigerian sports industry, in the broadcast industry, said he wasn't good enough, there's nothing good that can come out, he's not good enough to even be on the microphone. But today, he's one of the most respected sport journalists. I, what, what I'm saying is, 
at that time when everybody saw negativity about him saw his flaws couldn't you know support him to become who he, he has become if the boy did not have the will did not believe in himself that much did not push that much who would have lost such a great guy a hero to me i see him as a hero of nigerian league whether you like it or not of grassroots football as well and then you you can also see wale uh well what's it called uh Kodri. Olawale Kodri, the media officer of MFM and the kind of work that they've put in. People like us who don't have the voice that fits into media. These people have been shaded and been told all sorts of things that they are not good enough. That's the kind of thing that the Nigerian sports media does. See, there is nothing wrong with criticism. You can't criticize. I mean, I'm the king of criticism. Like this, I don't think there's anybody who criticizes like me in, in the media, in the sporting media. But you see, when you, when you criticize, it's time to also pour shower. Uh, pour flowers on these people shower them to the very fullest that's something we must understand find that balance we don't know how to find that balance and that's where the problem is the uh Randall Wardrum that came in to coach the team was brought in because of his network his connection and you would agree with me that when, since Randy came to this team it's not really had like the kind of performance that we've had previously but we've played the better type of friendly matches than any other person it's because of his connections and this is not a coach that just came in through the back door this is a coach that was well sorted after because of his network sometimes you do some things for other intents and purposes and so agreed against South Africa like I say if the selection was done right against South Africa or beat South Africa we lost to one the reaction and people say it's the fans but let me tell you this you see every fan have a, a journalist that they listen to that ignites their fire so they are the bomb the journalist is the fuse so when the journalist ignite that fuse it's going to light up and explode so they when you when you listen to nigerian journalists within the space of that game the negativity that they projected at about the team now rub off on the fans and you saw the fans exploding on social media so the coach was right why he apologized for well, the nff wanted peace they, i mean the whole environment is polluted so they wanted peace because they know that some of the will tell you nigerian journalists wants to kill you they would kill you they don't forgive nigerian sports journalists don't forgive they held grudge with Lisa from 2000 to forever so i'm still who grudges to him with him till today you 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 you, you watch the podcast yeah. so bottom line is the negativity is very high but the problem let me tell you what the problem is. The problem is the coach is never going to suffer. <laughs> Gunnar Troy is living a comfortable life with his family. I mean, I spoke to him four days ago and he said, uh, for once he's hanging with his children. The only pain he's got right now is the, the suffering of Bodo. Thinking that he coached that team that had Zidane, Yori Jokov, Christophe Dugari, uh, Byzantine Lizarazu, and the rest of them. And now they are almost going to extinction with such a beautiful stadium and the rest. Okay. That's the only pain he's got. Nigeria, he still wish Nigeria well all the time, but he, he got money for it. My point is, when we do all this destruction, the players will not suffer. They will lose and go back to their club, get their money. The coach will go back, get paid. He's, 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 they don't say if he loses, he would, he would not be paid. He will be paid. Even if you sack him, you pay him the sum of his money. We are the ones that will suffer. The ecosystem. We have not started thinking ecosystem journalism. If we think ecosystem journalism, we'll think of building it. If a Sky Sports is criticizing people in England, it is their five billion pounds that they invested that's making them do that. They would also protect their investment. Hello, my name is Sumera. I am from Pakistan and you are watching Elegbeta TV Radio. Please subscribe. Thank you. Hi, my name is Abdullah Wali. I am from Pakistan, the number one country in the world in cricket. You are watching Elegbeta Sports TV Radio. Please subscribe. The Nigerian sports media and there are a lot more independent media than the real conventional sports anyway conventional media anyway they don't invest in the sports so i don't know why they even have the audacity to criticize that much you can't criticize in anything that you're not investing in that you're benefiting from but you're not putting anything back into that's the truth people don't want to hear this but it's the fact the nigerian sports media don't invest in our sports and then again the government also does not invest in us but do you know that the budget the national budget that's the nigerian budget for youth and sports 97 percent of that budget goes to nyc so the whole sports it's not it's more than 98 like percent the whole sport in nigeria that includes football basketball wrestling swimming boxing judo taekwondo every sport put together takes 20 percent of that money nigerian wrestling federation for instance for a year gets 20 million to do wrestling 
how, how we're going to produce champions in in that regard so when you when you suffer these people this much and you see people still get the audacity to insult or uh, rally on uh, rally on them rain on the parade the way we do is bad now let's center in on Falcons. Falcons lost their first game and then everybody went ballistic knowing fully whether we still have two games to play and then they've gone on to win the other two games scoring two scoring four which is now they have seven goals even though they came second in that group they scored more than south africa that are top of the group they're going to play Cameroonians. i'm not saying they're going to it's an automatic win for them but if this team still goes on to the finals win and defend the title what justification is it that we have to pull out that kind of criticism that we have sometimes you just it is easier to just write make an analysis okay so it's that mentality that i was talking about when we analyze some some of these journalists analyze european football so pep Guardiola wins 10 games is normal he loses one game he's a fraud <laughs> you don't give any analysis as to why they lost what the opposition did well the tactical arrangement who did they shut down why did they win this game you don't do all of that you just say it's a fraud it's a fraud it's a fraud it's been found out no that's the mentality that, that we have we have substandard half-baked analysts representers journalists in nigeria system who just feed on that corrupt uh, let me not use the word corrupt but that mediocre line of negativity and that's what the coach saw and exactly what he said there is nothing wrong i keep saying there's nothing wrong with criticism but criticize with an intent to improve don't criticize with an intent to destroy but to pursue a campaign of calumny against a coach because you don't like him i i, I think that the Falcons need our local coaches warm but let me tell you what what our local coaches cannot provide and that people don't think about they cannot provide the network and connections for us to play canada yeah. for us to play usa for us to play france for us to play norway they don't have that network and the fa realize their weakness in uh, we also do not have that network okay but we can use somebody who have the network then what do we do as as people of the ecosystem we support the band to succeed we love the friendly matches some people traveled to us and canada uh, to canada because of falcons they jump on the plane to go to falcons it helps their visa their traveling experience so don't use this team don't come and be destroying this team so the journalists that were the unfortunate the good journalists a lot of the journalists yeah, that were corrupt that. Yeah, are yeah, the I, good ones <laughs> you know i saw jim francis i saw toby adekbaju i saw a lot these are the good ones now they are the ones suffering from the eve evil of those that are really sitting in their studio, they will never be able to travel with a team. They will never, even if the factors are playing in Lagos, they will not go to stadium to watch them. Those are the ones that are really causing the negativity. Unfortunately, good people suffer when evil people do the things that they do. So yeah. I, I'm, 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 I'm sorry because these guys are good guys. I know them. I see their work, the effort that they put in. I'm very happy for Toby when he got the Value Jet uh, support, okay, partnership, whatever it is. But I'm happy for him because this is a man who's putting work and if you're a bible believer you know bible god says that i'll bless the works of your hand the works of his hands are being blessed which is very very good all right and uh, you know rightly said he came out to apologize and uh, I, I don't know if the team still have access to trainings but yeah the fact remains that he Rondri has come out to you know rescind the statement and apologize to the nigerian media that he hold the media in high regard you are listening to a legbete tv radio